The history of the Royal Ballet of Cambodia begins here, in Angkor, the former capital of the Khmer Empire, founded in the 9th century AD. These four girls are dancers with the Royal Ballet. 800 years have passed since an unknown artist carved this bas-relief on the Bayon Temple. The suggestive dress worn by these stone dancers is no longer acceptable today, but the four friends identify with these sensual ancestors immediately. They are the Apsaras. The Apsara dancers lived in heaven with the gods. 1,000 years ago, King Kumba, the legendary founder of the kingdom, fell in love with one of them. Charmed, the dancer came down to earth and became the Princess Mira. She then taught the secrets of the celestial dance to mortals. Over the centuries, a link of divine beauty was woven between the figure of the king and the dance that fell from the heavens. The royal ballet was created from the love of art and power. No one embodies this fascinating history better than Princess Bupa Divi, the daughter of His Highness King Norodom Sihanouk, and the first dancer with royal blood. In the 1960s, Bupa Divi was 18 years old. She shone with a dazzling grace that raised ballet to its highest levels. Forty years later, Bupa TV's aura remains unchanged. <laughs> The princess no longer dances, but she fights tirelessly to save the classical Khmer dance. She was responsible for UNESCO's classification of the Royal Ballet of Cambodia as an intangible heritage of humanity. The Royal Ballet has some 50 dancers, men and women, along with professors, dance masters, and musicians. Today, the troupe is preparing an important performance, the Angkor Nights Festival, which will soon be held in the temple of Angkor Wat, the cradle of the Khmer civilization. Kuhn, one of the greatest dance professors, follows every step of her daughter Srevi's rehearsals.
Sri Ka, Srevi's twin sister, works under the supervision of Professor Satya, a premier dancer with the Royal Ballet. Dancing with the Royal Ballet is every child's dream. But to become a dancer, children must first study classical Khmer dance at the Royal University of Fine Arts. Several hundred girls and boys show up to compete for just 50 places. The great Professor Kuhn oversees the auditions. Classical Khmer dance requires gifts that only nature can give. A good physique, a sense of rhythm, a good ear, the ability to memorize subtle melodies. ตาโป้ซอมเพลงเนี่ยแต่อะไรแต่อะไรแต่จังหวะสงัดกลัวจ้องไล่คลางๆตึกเนโฮเจริญสบายดีเตรยตึกเกโอปรูไฮตุ
where she had been deported, to show them the real story behind her words. Your grandmother and your grandfather were with us. Your grandfather died here. From April 1975 to January 1979, the Khmer Rouge deported 60% of the 7.5 million Cambodians to work camps. Two million people lost their lives. When we arrived here, we came across the Khmer Rouge. They took us to the hard labor camp. We'd never seen anything like it. They caught me. They, they made me sit on the ground. They tied me up with a rope. I had to put my head back, like this, so I wouldn't suffocate. They forced a mango down my throat. They hit me on the head with a piece of bamboo this big. They hit me, bang, bang, on the head. They wanted me to die, but I didn't die. One morning, they let me go on the riverbank. I went to get my baby. I tried to nurse him, but I had no milk in my breasts. The baby didn't have anything to suck, and he died of hunger. Your older sister, who I carried all the way here, on my back, also died of hunger. The children were forced to work in the slave labor squads. Exhausted by the hardships, mistreated, they died by the thousands. I thought about dance. I knew I would dance again. I kept my hands flexible. I was afraid they would stiffen up. Did you hide? I hid so that no one knew I was a dancer. When someone asked me what I did in Phnom Penh before, I answered that I was a, a seamstress, that I sewed clothes. At night, I went over the dances and songs in my head so I wouldn't forget them. I was certain that I would go back and dance. I loved to dance. I loved it immensely. I was 23 years old, the age of loving. Kru Mi, Pol Pot's sister, was herself a former dancer in the Royal Ballet. For unknown reasons, she pursued the troop members with a senseless hatred. Any artist who was discovered was immediately executed. I never believed we would meet up again. Are you well? During her pilgrimage, Kum recognized a former comrade in suffering. I was with her in the camp. We worked together. We replanted rice, we weeded, we dug a canal. We didn't have anything. I didn't dare tell her I was a dancer. I hid it, even from her. I'm saying it for the first time now. I never spoke of it before. No, I didn't dare. I cried too much. I cried for three years, eight months and 20 days. I cried everything. I have no more tears. Now I tell my daughters, don't make things hard for your mother. I have no more tears to cry. During those three years, eight months and 20 days, I cried so much, I don't have any more tears.
Sri Cha also passed the auditions. She will take dance classes at the Royal University of Fine Arts. The school is in a suburb about 10 kilometers from Phnom Penh. If one of the children misses the bus, or if it is full, as it often is, getting here is not easy. A late student has to take a moto taxi, a very expensive solution. Often, there's no other option than to miss class. On her first day at school, Sri Cha has the honor of raising the national flag. Mao, the boy who sang with such conviction, also passed the auditions. In addition to classical dance, the school teaches all the traditional Khmer arts, the circus, folklore, choir, music. The students discover a demanding discipline that starts by folding the traditional rehearsal dress. The education alternates between dance and general studies. Some students have a hard time. Kamau is one of them. <laughs> Do you arrive late every day? Why are you late? Huh? Look at the others. They're doing their exercises. Why are you late? Speak. Look at your hands. You arrive late and dirty like this. It's okay for today, but tomorrow, if you're late again, I'll punish you. Instead of doing your exercises, I'll send you out to dry in the sun. Go on. In classical Khmer dance, the male roles are danced by women. 
Kuhn teaches the girls who are selected for these roles because of their solid physiques. Sri Cha is pretty and delicate, so she could choose a female role. The school's courtyard is immense, but the buildings are cramped, and few of them are suited for dance. During the hot season, it's impossible to do the physical exercises in the poorly ventilated rooms. The covered courtyard is the only suitable place. Several classes have to rehearse together under rather chaotic conditions. Yet this doesn't discourage Kuhn and the other professors. <laughs> I want to become a dancer because I see the beautiful clothes, beautiful jewelry. They dance so well. I want to work even harder to look like them. Sri Cha dreams of becoming the goddess Moni Makala, the role performed so gracefully by Professor Satya, who is famous for her long and supple, exceptionally elegant hands. When people returned from the Khmer Rouge camps in 1979, Phnom Penh was a ghost town. Thousands of orphans wandered the streets digging in the ruins for food. Today, life has returned. It's thriving, but scars from the tragedy remain. Wretched masses are crowded into precarious hovels along the banks of the Mekong, where Khmer and his mother live. I don't know how to do much. There's not a lot of work and the wages are low. It's hard to survive. I want my son to go to school so that he, he knows things. I don't want him to become an idiot like me. He has to know how to find work and, and take care of himself and not live in hardship like me. When I take my son to school in the fall, I have to buy the authorization to attend school, the supplies. I'll figure it out. I'll find the money so that my son doesn't lack for anything. If I don't have enough to eat, it doesn't matter, so long as my son is studying. <laughs> For Kamal's mother, the classes given by the Royal University mean that her son can escape the ignorance and misery that she has always known. Ah! 
Unfortunately, Kamal's notebook is a catalogue of bad grades. I am happy my teachers give me homework. When I have problems, I ask my friends. I don't like math very much. Oh, I like it enough, but I don't know how to work out figures. I work hard, like with dance, but I don't get it. I don't understand. I would like to be bigger. I could play the role of the monkey. People would look at me. What I like most of all is the white monkey. The Royal Ballet performs episodes from the Ramayana. The Khmer appropriated the legendary Indian epic and expanded the role of Hanuman, the leader of the monkey army that helps Prince Rama defeat the Yaks, the giants who kidnap the beautiful Sita and hold her prisoner. Hanuman, the white monkey, is the ultimate hero. Endowed with magical powers, he's the idol of young Cambodian boys. The boys play the giants or the monkeys. The yaks are the giants who torment human beings, while the monkeys defend widows and orphans. The choreography is based strongly on mimicking the animal. Kamau is working on his dream of becoming the white monkey. Ballet rehearses in the National Theatre, constructed in 1968 by King Norodom in one of the city's most beautiful spots. The building burned 12 years ago, and the damage has never been repaired, but the soul of the Royal Ballet is still anchored in this dangerous ruin. Many artists refuse to abandon this symbolic spot. Their attachment to the theatre and their determination to rehearse here, despite the disastrous conditions, is an act of resistance through which they are expressing their refusal to see the royal ballet moved far from the king and the court, becoming a troop like any other.
The Angkor Knights are in a few days. Professors and dancers are working tirelessly on the final details of the ballet. Kuhn guides her daughter with authority. Like her mother, Srevi dances the men's roles as they require a certain physical strength. Satya leads Srika by close, sensual contact. Srika becomes the mirror of Satya, her extension. In this way, the Khmer dance has been transmitted from generation to generation for a thousand years. The royal palace, painted the brilliant yellow of the court, was traditionally the residence of the royal ballet. Today, it's a tourist site, and dance has been banned. To return to the rooms where she spent her youth, Princess Bhupativi must now request an authorization. This is where the royal ballet rehearsed every morning. My grandmother directed the rehearsals from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. When I was small, my grandmother took care of me. Every morning I came here and imitated the movements of the dance. At the age of four, four and a half, I was here. Later, I understood what the royal ballet was. Princess Bupa Devi's beloved grandmother was Queen Kosamak. Through her passion and obstinate efforts, this great queen revived the royal ballet which for nearly a century had stagnated in a state of mortal lethargy. She modernized the repertory to make it more accessible. Defying court protocol to place her granddaughter in the royal ballet, she opened the way to her becoming an immensely talented dancer. <laughs> In 1960, my grandmother, Queen Kosamak, mother of King Noradam Sianuk, my father, created the dance of the White of Sara. I was the first dancer in this role, and ever since, I've been known as the White of Sara. I am the White of Sara from that era. There have been many other White of Sara after me. The day before the Angkor performance, every corner of the National Theatre still standing has become a makeshift workshop. The Royal Ballet is run on a shoestring. Sim Montha, a retired former dancer and dance professor, strains her eyes in a dark loft. The creation of the costumes and accessories rests on the total commitment of these women who are devoted to the Khmer dance. Sri Ka is trying on the white Apsara costume she'll wear in Angkor for the first time. The seamstresses are working around the clock 
so that the last costumes will be ready in time. The gold thread embroidery is painstaking and requires careful attention. If the ballet had to pay the full price for the seamstresses and embroiderers, the costumes would be priceless. It is therefore these women who, through their tenacious and selfless efforts, keep the Royal Ballet afloat. Srikar's joined hands express her devotion to the spirit of dance. When Kuhn places the headdress on the girl's head, Srikar takes on the role. I'm so happy to see my girls getting dressed to dance the Apsara roles. I remember when I was their age and I was dancing before Paul Pot came to power. I'm very happy that my daughters are dancing in my place. There are two of them to carry on, two girls to ensure the continuity of traditional classical dance. I wanted a girl to take over and I have two. Buddha gave me two girls to take my place and continue the classical dance. The troop has gathered at the entrance to the Angkor Temple for a ceremonial offering to the spirits of dance. In just a few hours now, the floodlights will come on for the splendid Angkor Knight's performance. Hm Thie, this elderly, silver-haired woman who is giving her blessing to the young dancers, is a living legend of traditional Khmer dance. Her talent dazzled the court and the entire country. Sri Cha, Kamau, and a few students from the dance classes at the University of Fine Arts wangled away to travel with the troupe to Angkor. They're wandering in the wings, savoring each minute before the performance starts. Just a few more minutes. Tonight, Srikar's career is taking shape. More than ever, Kamau is thinking about joining the army of the monkeys. 
Evil is afoot. The horde of giants is getting close. Battle must be joined. Hanuman's monkey soldiers prepare for the upcoming epic battle. Once again, good will triumph over evil. Tonight's three car follows in the footsteps of Bupa Devi, Satya, and the sublimely graceful dancers who mark the role. She is the white Apsara. Tonight, Sri Kar is in heaven. The performance was a success. Many magazines have published articles about the two sisters.
When they were young, I was worried about their health. Now that they have become dancers, I'm worried about their career. Even happy, a mother is always worried. Many recent political decisions have aimed to distance the royal ballet from the king himself. Those who support tradition are worried. They fear that this gradual separation would put an end to the closeness that has existed for a thousand years, and that the royal ballet would ultimately lose its identity and its raison d'etre. Whatever happens, Princess Bupa Devi will continue to fight persistently to save this jewel of Khmer culture. Currently, even though we're optimistic for the ballet's future, we know that the Cambodians and foreigners must remain vigilant to defend and must unite to defend the ballet. I would like to thank UNESCO, which classified the Royal Ballet a masterpiece of intangible heritage of humanity. Yes, I want to thank UNESCO from the bottom of my heart for this official proclamation, which they made in 2001. <laughs> Sricha and Kamau are dreaming. She sees herself as Apsara and he as Hanuman. Sricha is speaking with the gods. Kamau fights to save the princesses. As long as Khmer children still dream of dancing the immortal traditional roles, the Royal Ballet will survive. The Apsaras will charm the kings and peasants. The white monkey will foil the threats of the wicked. <laughs> 